Here we've got another integral and we want to first change the order of integration. That's what we're asked to do. So let's see how we go with this one. Uh, that's 102. So I'm going to let I denote our integral, the value of our integral. And the question asks us when you, you may be able to integrate that straight away, but the question asks us to first change the order of integration. So, our region of integration, let's call it, I don't know, omega or something. So, x is between 0 and 1. And y is between x and 1. Mm, got the feeling this is going to be a triangle. So let's draw a picture. Remember, drawing a picture helps us geometrically focus on the region, and then we can re-describe it. Okay, that's the, that, that's the motivation for drawing a picture. It just gives us a better geometric understanding of, of the region of integration. Okay, so let's draw in the lines x equals 0, y equals, uh, x equals 1, y equals x, and y equals 1. Okay, now which triangle is it? Is it the top triangle or the bottom triangle? Top, right. Okay, if I look here, I just draw my vertical line. The vertical line has to enter at x and leave at, at y equals x and leave at y equals 1. So that would align with what we have here. And of course, you have this little interval down here. So our region is the top triangle. So let's re-describe our region of integration omega. So I'm going to draw another picture. Draw in the same lines. So here's y equals x. Okay, who wants to have a go at just at redescribing that region? Instead of a vertical line, I'm going to use a horizontal line. So who, who, what's the redescription going to be for the bottom um, setup with our horizontal line? Who can tell me? What's it going to be? Yes, x is between 0 and y because the, the horizontal line enters the region omega at 0, the line um, x equals 0, and it leaves at x equals y. Yes, y is between 0 and 1. Great. Okay, so now let's set up our integral in terms of this description now. So, this is just a double integral. And Fubini's theorem says I can write my double integral as a repeated integral over these type of regions. 
So I'm going to use this description. Now, you can see one of the advantages of reversing the order of integration here. It's easy to integrate that inside integral with respect to x. Okay, so that's one advantage. So let's do that and then work our way onto the other integral. So if I integrate the inside integral, it's just going to be x, with respect to x, it's just going to be x times all of this. And when you substitute in y and 0 for x, I'm just going to get <coughs> this. Now, I've got one slightly challenging more integral to do. What's the antiderivative of this integrand? Well, it's going to be something involving a, you know, a, a square root sign. It's going to be something involving 1 minus y squared all square rooted. Well, what? It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be something like, if, if it's going to be something like this, right? It's going to be something like this. But not quite, right? If I differentiate this, do I get this? Well, almost, except I've got, if I differentiate this, I've got this minus coming to the front. So I just need to adjust with a little minus sign there. OK? Now, if you're not familiar with that, again, you probably could do this using um, a substitution. You would let uh, u equal 1 minus y squared or something like this. But, you know, your second, second year now, we, we expect you to be able to, to, to do those sorts of things. OK, so if I sub in um, 1, I'll get 0. If I sub in 0, I'll get minus um, 1 to the all to the half, which is just minus 1. Oh, sorry, minus, minus one. Yes. Cool. Yes. Now, of course, you may be able to do that integral and just, you know, just integrate straight away. That's okay, too. 